My doctor just told me that I have AIDS, but I've never had a homosexual experience in my life. That's why there's new Alibline. Alibline? That's right, Alibline is the first ever AIDS medication for heterosexuals who didn't contract the disease from gay intercourse of any kind. So for people just like me? Sure. Go ahead, try it. I remember when I accidentally sat on a needle in the back of a New York City taxi cab. Shortly thereafter, I was diagnosed with full-blown AIDS. Me. Straight as an arrow, Steve. Of all people. How am I supposed to tell my dad that's even straighter than I am? That would have been quite a predicament before Alibline. Sure would have. But when I told my dad, turned out he had had a similar experience in an inner-city movie theater. So we got on Alibline together. I'm a heterosexual family man, but AIDS can happen anywhere. For me, it's a normal vacation at a theme park on a roller coaster. Unfortunately, the guy in front of me was too tall for the ride and was decapitated in one of the tunnels. Short story, he had AIDS. And a pint of his blood came from his jugular, shot right into my mouth and down my throat. Sounds credible. I'm a big time surfer and I'm sure you remember in 2015 when Redondo Beach was infested with full-blown AIDS sharks. You've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> wow, it even has a steak and IPA aftertaste. Now I don't have to be embarrassed that I got AIDS from having sex with hundreds of hot women. Uh, seriously, pal? That's what you're going with? Yeah, that's what happened. Whatever you say, straight guy. And hello, welcome to Normal World. This is tonight's news. A new study out of the University of Cambridge claims that suppressing negative thoughts might actually improve mental health. The person conducting the study was Dr. Hansi Camp Counselor. Mm. <laughs> now for some uh, Danny Masterson update here. His wife, uh, Bijou Phillips, has actually filed divorce uh, after Danny Masterson was sentenced to 30 years in prison. When asked for comment, her divorce lawyer said, her divorce lawyer? Her divorce, divorce lawyer. lawyer said, if you think Danny was a rapist, get a load of us. <laughs> it's vicious, the legal system. Those divorce lawyers are wicked. Yes. A stripper from Cleveland tried to seduce a cop after being pulled over this past weekend for drunk driving. No shots were officially fired, but the officer did discharge his weapon later that night into a wastebasket. Mm. Thank you. I'm Dave Landau, and if you want to see me <laughs> September 30th, I will be at the Carson City Nugget in Carson City, Nevada. Joining me is, of course, and with a extra special message for real. Hey, right. uh, it's Garrett. Quarter Blake Garrett. I actually wanted to let you guys know uh, a friend of the show, Gary Beekler, Nerd Rotic. I work hey, on guy. that channel. We do Friday Night Tights there. Our channel was struck. Uh, our last video got taken down from YouTube. Uh, just want to let you guys know, you can find us on Rumble and on Twitter. We posted the video up there as well. So I just wanted to say that. Let everybody know what's going on. Uh, hopefully, I think we're still good to do the show because we it's just a warning, I believe. So our monetization is still good. Our live streaming is still okay. There you go. Go check it out. Quick question. Do they tell you what the strike's for? They don't, do they ever? This one, they did, because okay. uh, we used footage of the strike, and an extra that was in the footage struck the channel and claimed the entire video as her own. So, mm. YouTube's great, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> isn't it great? I hope she lives a long, healthy life. <laughs> also joining us tonight is Angela. Hi. Why did you assume it was a she? Oh, mm. oh, okay. I, I, I also assumed. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> okay. It was a guy. I don't know. Was it a dude? No, it was a chick. Oh, okay. I was right. All right. Well. Yeah, see that? <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, put, <laughs> put that feminist <laughs> cut. <laughs> put that feminist cut back in the deck, bro. Uh -huh. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you next time. I know. One of these days. I know. It's all going to come out. <laughs> 
And of course, joining us tonight, comedian and friend of the show, Jamie Kilstein. Aw, hi guys. Hey. What's up, Jamie? Hey, how are you? Good. Uh, that would that uh, the actress didn't realize that's probably the biggest audience she will ever get in front of, and she Absolutely. was just like, "Take it down." <laughs> Classic self-hating artist. Self-sabotage, girl. Look into it. Yep. Extras, come on. I don't like extras. No. I know a few of them. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Alex Stein used to be one. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> him and my... It's funny because... In the him, office. My buddy Sebastian... Look it up. Uh, ...was one of my best friends, was like... Wait, you work with Alex? I Because in 2012, they used to do extra work together all the time, apparently. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I had no idea. So, yeah. What up? What up, Seabass? <laughs> I know you're watching. <laughs> New hours. Very complicated a, job. Hollywood you have to liberal. pretend to not talk. It's yeah. really just hurry up and wait anyway. So you're just getting paid the same as any yeah. movie star, just not the millions. You ever see the ones that are like really overdoing it in the back? They're like, I'm a star. This is yeah, like this is their opportunity. Yeah, this is my time. They've given themselves a backstory just so hopefully they can be allowed in catering. Yep. Yeah, and they make you leave. <laughs> so they're like, look, come on. We we're not looking for a distraction. Just sit there and sip coffee. Yeah, you're a lady sipping coffee, not begrieved widow sipping coffee. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tragic back. But I went to Juilliard, and, I was, <laughs> and now they're Feels making the aggrieved coffee for yeah, a living. Yeah. <laughs> this what is, if I had a line? Is <laughs> could I have a line? This is CSI Miami. Yeah, <laughs> I just shut up. And you're a yeah. corpse. I just thought. <laughs> <You're dead. laughs> I just thought I'd ad lib a little bit. <laughs> what if the corpse around. blinked? <laughs> Can you imagine being an extra and being like, with. hey, what's the director feel about riffing? <laughs> it's kind of like a Judd <laughs> Apatow vibe. Yeah, how does yeah, that yeah. work? Is this like an outline or we have to stick to these lines here? <laughs> yeah. where, where am I going? <laughs> I'm going to riff anyways. Just give you some extra material. Fine. That is the worst feeling in the world, though, to be a background actor on any show like that. <laughs> any show? Any show. Especially in NCIS. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Everybody's been on NCIS. I've been on NCIS. Have you really? No, but oh. somebody who looks like me probably. That was definitely like for a period of time in the New York stand up scene, like those were the credits with like everybody was just getting put on Law and Order and like shows like that. Oh, every comic was somebody who was like, I saw the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guy moving. While he's boxes. Load, yeah, loading yeah. boxes yeah. into yeah. a truck. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of Dove Davidovs. Yeah. 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 And yeah, that makes were, sense. <laughs> then you had uh, it's a. It's a tool, yeah. Colin um, Quinn did Cop Show, which was just a parody of all those shows because all the comics were doing that. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, it was always hilarious. Speaking of hilarious, we all know how funny Zelinsky is. We yes. saw his penis piano. <laughs> yep, here we go. Yeah, you remember. Talented, it was great. Dude. Very good. Talented. Ukraine's got talent. Uh, Zelensky visited the White House today to make the case for $24 billion more in U.S. dollars. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> dude, stop. <laughs> Sorry, I can't even I can't get this. I can't even take out. this. <laughs> How are we still sending him money? Flint doesn't have drinking water yet, right? Nope. No. Fix I'm the problem. When did like Ohio blew up? When did de yeah Ohio doesn't exist anymore? Go to the <laughs> guys. Go to the worst part of Ukraine, and it looks better than Flint. Yeah, and I say that as a Michigander. Yeah, dude. Like I don't understand when the left became the forget the poor people here let's support wars overseas just and that shows how ridiculous the political system is is because it's like hey we were mad about that when republicans were doing it mm -hmm. in iraq and now we're going to support it because it's our old dude who's doing it and well, they started supporting it back when obama was in because he was just dropping bombs left right and center yeah dude they had to be like oh that's okay now i mean it's cool he's probably listening to al green when he does it yeah. or like shooting hoops in between <laughs> droning weddings and everyone's like yay hey, he's ours yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true he he really hurt a lot of Jesus a lot Biden. a lot it's like he was purpose it's like he was mad at the institution of marriage he bombed so many yeah. weddings <laughs> like we just it. specific is there a wedding today all right let's do it today he's like i'm gonna bomb a lot of overseas heterosexual weddings until these homosexual weddings get passed <laughs> <laughs> Just well, I'm just uh, there was a billboard in New York City uh, that said "Welcome." Or that said, well, "Let's just play it. It's fun. I don't want to even." This is glory to urine. To urine, and it's Man. on yellow. <laughs> Somebody's mad in the graphics department. You played that again. <laughs> it was yellow. It was yeah. <laughs> glory, glory to urine. 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 Incredible. 
Yeah, you know, there's like 40 Wall funny. Street businessmen that are in line like, oh, that's the new place where you can get pissed on and degraded? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the new place. <laughs> it's New York City. <laughs> it moves around. Yeah, that's true. You just have to go into one in, in every four buildings. Yeah. Find a <laughs> hole. Certain subway lines. Yeah. <laughs> every subway line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Ukraine uh, media edited a video uh, of his speech. That's Zelensky's, of course. At the UN to make the audience look bigger. Uh, but they forgot what I, <laughs> classic they all bombed out but they but they forgot to edit Zelensky out of the audio uh, the audience footage не розгортати цю зброю, не розповсюджувати, не допускати погрози нею, не допускати тренування для того, щоб забезпечити ядерне роззброєння. І це хороша стратегія. Але, але вона не повинна бути єдиною. It's old C-SPAN. <laughs> Run it again. Nobody's going to notice. They have to accept it anyways. Classic teleporting Ukrainians. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, after Mila Kunis was a big supporter of Ukraine, and after the way that she wrote that letter for Danny Masterson, we can stop sending them money now. Yeah. It's okay now. <laughs> we can move on. Like, why are we doing this? Are you okay, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> you I, I was I was laughing and sitting on a Danny Masterson joke at the same time, and I just froze. <laughs> well, we should start sending money to Danny Madison, Madison instead, right? Of course. <laughs> instead of all the Ukraine money. Get a, a, a cause we can all support. Get behind. Yeah. I can't imagine. He's getting divorced in prison, not to go back to that, but that is funny. Where it's like you're in prison for 30 years, and it's like now you're getting divorced, and it's like okay. like now she decides, oh, yeah. I didn't know, and like that's the worst news he's had all year. <laughs> he's like, you know, I've been getting raped for the last three days. Oh, well, how do we know My it didn't? Wife go- be you. How do we know it didn't go the other way? How do we know that he didn't initiate it and he wanted? And he's like, I have a prison wife now, and the only respectable, honoring true. thing to do is to break it off with my outside these walls wife. It's that's me and T Bone. Yeah. She goes to visit him. He's just got like one leg rolled up like LL Cool J. (laughs) Throwing out secrets that that he's single. It's something like that. that Yeah. Or like you have to pull in your pockets. It's like where you have an earring on on the right side. It was the right ear in the 90s. Yeah, I had three. I also like I haven't been watching the movies. Right. <laughs> just super gay. Extra extra just gay. Just let everybody know. Just want to make sure. Do you remember when kids would like do this thing where they were they would say uh like oh you have gum on the bottom of your shoe and like I feel like kids in the 90s their only job was to like try to figure out if you were gay or yes. reasons they could call you gay where if you checked your shoe like this like if you looked forward you were straight but if you looked behind you you were gay cuz you were checking like everything was like what, what what earring do you have that means you're gay how do you check if there's gum on your shoe that means you're gay it was nails too You'd be like, hey, show me your nails. And you got it like this. But if you went like this, everybody was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 that's right. That was the other one. That was the other one. Got yeah. you. Yeah. Kids should have just manned up and been like, hey, you want to suck my dick? No? Yeah. All right. You're good. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. Why did you try to hide it? You're gay still. <laughs> why did you bring it up? You know what? Let's get a <laughs> bunch gay. of other guys in here to ask. <laughs> you guys want to get in a circle? No? Colorblind. You guys are gay. Yeah, yeah. You guys show me uh, like your nails and how you would hold my dick with said nails, please. <laughs> <laughs> just, let's put out your hand. Like, how would you? <laughs> if you were to okay, I'm so glad you could sleep over Randy <laughs> Speaking of Yes uh, Don Jr. Uh, his Twitter account was <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Randy Speaking of Randy uh, Don Jr.'s uh, Twitter account was supposedly hacked um, <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly <laughs> It's alleged It's not been proven That's true That's true Okay and, uh, You know I don't want to Who knows It, it so we, but we do want to share a half-ass top ten of his tweets. Well, I feel like we need to start this with the actual tweet that he did tweet out. And what what page is that on? <laughs> it's the top of page two. Top of page two. Uh, and bottom. Of I mean, this one should close because it's going to be hard to beat. I'm going to be honest good. with you. Where there, I have so many pages here. <laughs> oh, uh, here we go. This is the one. This is the actual tweet here. Fuck Joe Biden, stupid ass. <laughs> that's the actual tweet. No, I think he can say that. that we're, now that we're prefaced here, he's he's got black. Well, I'd said I could do it. So and you're you're part black. Oh yeah, I think you've earned it. Oh. I, it. It doesn't go over well in the streets. Really? Yeah, it's a lot to get out before I get punched. Maybe it's your tone. Let's try. 
<laughs> Try to it's an R that you put. <laughs> Maybe it's who you're saying it to. Yeah. It's old white women. <laughs> <laughs> I could get more of a pass at that point. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Number one. Elliot Page would get it. L O L L. I also hooked up with Lauren Bobert at Beetlejuice. Hashtag it's her thing. <laughs> Maybe she's just a freak. Maybe she likes the Beetlejuice. Uh, number three is uh, hashtag DeSantis2024. <laughs> that one's my personal favorite. It's a little on the nose there. Fun fact Michelle Wolf is my favorite comic. <laughs> <laughs> we know that one. I believe true. that. Yeah. Uh, number. <laughs> I thought the special was funny. I don't want to get in trouble. I thought it was pretty funny. Oh no! Cancel. We yeah. In, I uh, hate you now. In physics, string theory is a theoretical framework in which the point-like particles, <laughs> particle <laughs> physics, are replaced by one-dimensional objects called strings. String theory describes how these strings propagate. Through space and interact <laughs> with each other. Dude, that's deep. Yeah, I love it. So whoever's hacking this account is like a smart dude. Oh, I think it's cool. Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> <laughs> throwing around the N word. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet number six Diet Coke sucks. Fight me. Yeah. That's, that's a contingent thing to say with your dad. You know, he loves Diet Coke. And those oh, are just some of the real tweets he put out half assed up to. You know what's not half ass? What is that? Miracle made sheets. Uh, Honestly, they're very comfortable. I love them. I ordered them. Well, I didn't order them. They sent them to me. I don't want to lie to the audience. But I still haven't I've, got a pair. I, I wish I did. If I if I did, I could talk the part, about how smooth and it's a part where you lie and, and um, nice and and uh, <laughs> uh, 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 moisture get, wicking they are and how they make you feel cool at night when you're trying to sleep. But I would never know those things because I don't have a pair. But you do. He doesn't. They really. He really wants a pair, and he's giving me crap about it because mine are so comfortable. You're always sleeping in those nice sheets, and I don't I know. Ever get. I don't get. To, I don't get to try it. Oh, well, that's why when you come over, I go. Do you want to touch those? They were given to me by a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, what and I say, you? are there germs on that? And I say, no, they're self cleaning. What? That's right, it's because they are self cleaning sheets. Can you believe it? That means you can get right up freak nasty in there, mm -mm. <laughs> and it's going to get clang, clang just because of what it is made with. It's comfortable, it's not a high price tag, and it's got that luxury feel that's used by from some five stars hotel. Oh. And they're designed for your skin. Look, bacteria clogs up your, paw, your pores, not your paws, what are you, a dog? But maybe it does. Also <laughs> causes breakouts and acne. Nobody wants acne. Yeah. Have you ever, ugh, no offense if you have acne, but <laughs> You're if disgusting. you want to fix your acne, order these sheets. What's stopping you? Certainly not your acne. Is it so powerful that it can't make you go to the computer? <laughs> <laughs> go to trymiracle.com slash normal. Yeah, you could do that even if you have acne. Right. And then maybe you won't have acne. Yeah. And guess what? You're going to have somebody in them sheets a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm Silky. telling you. That's why you go to trymiracle.com slash normal. I love them. And right now, you can get three free towels and save an extra 20%. That's so much. Right now. Three right free now. towels. You can take them and you can... Code normal. Yes. And you can take the towels and smack smack a loved one in the butt. Oh, in a playful way. In a playful way. Yeah, yeah. not like, like a Danny ah, Masterson kind so of way. That's so soft. Like, what yeah. is that? You're like, yeah. wait a minute. That was It's a miracle. Even, it's not even a spanking. And you're like this... Is a soft, soft angelic. Say yes, I will marry you. Mm-hmm. That's right. These are soft, like a like Teddy Pendergrass's voice. Hmm. Trymiracle.com slash normal. And use the code normal to claim your three piece towel set and save over forty percent. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash normal. Oh, is that the end? I think so. Okay. Yeah. I actually do really like them. Whew, that was close. And I would like to, if anybody else has a problem with that, I think you're wrong. I'll say it. I'll fight for, I'll fight you for. Put on, you'll put on a, a sheet. Yeah. Fight somebody. I'll fight for their honor. <laughs> yeah. They'll be the hero that I've been sleeping on. Fight. They'll be the <laughs> hero <laughs> I've been sleeping on. Beautiful sheets. 
That's copyrighted. You can't. Uh, well, please don't do that. I tried to mix it up, but I changed. I changed it up. Yeah. Not, uh, like a weird. They're gonna strike us now. Yeah, I was actually holding up a picture of that extra as well while he was no. singing that. No. Yeah. no. Sorry. 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 Glory of sheets. <laughs> So, uh, so, comedian Hassan Min- Minaj, uh, we all love him, admitted to fabricating. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that long blink. <sighs> I've never heard of this person. Are you? Uh, he's a. I comedian. May have seen this person. He's a comedian. I'm told. Like it with names. Um, so uh, he's a comedian. He is. He uh, He's been on. He's had his own show on Netflix, I believe. Hmm. Okay. Um, he he had a special called uh, The King's Jester in 2022 that streamed on Netflix that was very popular. Um, but recently he admitted to fabricating details of his past stand-up specials. Um, <gasps> I know, which... Making up, Joe. First of all, when you hear it... Oh, this guy. Okay, yeah. I know this guy. I've seen yeah, him. you've seen him. He, uh, which, first of all, embellishment is the essence of storytelling. <laughs> <Not so. laughs> a lot of the stuff comics do on stage is not going to actually be real. Yeah. I'd say most of it. But <laughs> the problem is, is one story Minaj told in the King's Jester related to uh, an envelope with white powder that was sent to his home. Naturally, he thought the powder was anthrax. What year was this? All right, sorry. Is this 20 years ago? Yeah, because that's when it would have... If anybody sent you white powder, you would have just snorted it. <laughs> He claimed the powder accidentally spilled onto his daughter and she was rushed to the hospital where the doctor told him it was not anthrax. Well, did you figure that out when she wasn't burning? (laughs) Yeah. But Minaj admitted to the New Yorker that his daughter was never exposed to the white powder or hospitalized. A letter with white powder was sent to his house and he joked to his wife, holy shit, what is this, anthrax? In another fabricated story, <laughs> well, that's very different. In another fabricated story, Minaj talks about an FBI informant who infiltrated his family's mosque in the Sacramento area. The informant, named Brother Eric, was a white man who said he was a convert to Islam. Minaj said his brother Eric tried to get the men out of the congregation to talk about jihad. And the meth. Wow, what a long story! So this didn't. I was gonna say, I was like, is this made up or just very meandering? I know. (laughs) Even reading it, I'm like going blind. (laughs) All right. So, and he messed up with the brother Eric by saying he was applying to to get his pilot's license. (laughs) The police allegedly showed up and slammed Minaj onto the hood of his car. Minaj told the New Yorker that both stories were based on emotional truth. What? Despised being made up, adding the punchlines were worth the fictionalized premise. I actually just got a text after that reading. Dave just got a Netflix special. Thank you. Very excited. Did I? Very, very excited. Oh, good. I was raped. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it it was taken away. Uh, (laughs) You've lost the Netflix. Just lost it for being on this show. I'll do a throwback Thursday. None of you guys are Hannah Gatsby fans. Come on. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Please. How the greatest you... Australian co- comedian ever. And then the light was blue. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. That was Thank a... you. <laughs> Very hilarious. Give me cancer. Um, well, here, okay, I'll say my opinion. I do a lot of storytelling in my act. Sometimes you combine two events, like uh, into a story, you talk about your life, obviously stuff's going to be exaggerated, right. jokes. If every joke was true, comedians would be in prison. They'd all be in jail. Right. <laughs> like, the idea that there has to be, there certainly is an element of truth in comedy that's part of it. I think the best comedy is the most vulnerable, but it's like Richard Pryor running down the street on fire, you know, and there's a homeless guy going, uh, hey, can I get a light? That didn't happen. <laughs> Right. I'm going to clue you in there. <laughs> like, there's... But, I think if the he, thing we were talking if about. If he made up the fire part, though, you know what I mean? Because, like, that's... This that, is what I'm talking about. If the fire never happened... Right. Then it's, like, that's kind of, like, uh, But, yeah. yeah, did that line actually happen? We were talking about it. There needs to be some kind of truth in it for it to kind of resonate with people. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, how, a lot of it is made up. How are you marketing yourself, right? Like, are you... Um, Angela brought up, like, before we went on air, like, Anthony Jeselnik... Where it's like, okay, all of his punchlines involve him like hurting someone or killing a baby. It's like, okay, he has established that right. persona. But then if you are a comic who it's like, hey, this is my this is my truth. This is my authentic storytelling. The when, emotional when, truth. Yeah. When the punchlines get fantastical, you go, Okay, that's hyperbolic or whatever. But if the setups are like pur- almost purposefully like I have I've never Race made, baby. 
Yeah, was that like I would like to? We were talking about that too. Yep. I would like to actually see the way that they were delivered. Me too. Is because it, is like, this just unfunny context? reporters uh, d- d- dissecting jokes wrong? Right. Which which we get mad at when it happens to you know non liberal comics or whatever. Well, he's telling on himself. That's the thing, though. If he like confessed, <laughs> he's oh. no, he's the one who talked to a reporter about this. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so, it wasn't yeah, anybody doing up. a deep dive. He was just like, <laughs> hey, story hey, on it. Hey, if you happen to look into it, like if my daughter was in the hospital with anthrax, right? They're gonna say no because it never happened. Yeah, I don't think. But, but I did. I did order some gloves. <laughs> there, there, there's part of me some that latex gloves and powder floated about the room. <laughs> <laughs> It's my yeah. emotional truth. <laughs> There's part of me that wants to trash it because I'm like, I do feel like it was a little manipulative. But then I also wonder if I'm just upset and jealous that he used fake liberal outrage like I tried to do, but he was more successful and I got canceled. So I don't know. Well, now you're both canceled. That's a me thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is on me. I don't love it. I don't know, man. I think but your that... your act wasn't fake based on that. No, it's just what I believed at the time. Right. Yeah. No. You if I stupid. if I was like I was down at Occupy Wall it Street, was <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't funny. But yeah. But but okay. So like, look at your Conan. So if the old version of me, like, I think this would be bad. If I was like, hey, I was down at Occupy Wall Street and I got arrested um, because they were about to attack a black person and I stood in front of them mm. and then a punchline yeah. um, that's like or if like I was in 9-11 yeah, yeah like if, if, if you what, yeah my yeah. people did 9-11 yeah like if like, you were a comic who said you were in one of the yeah, in, <laughs> in the building that would be a bad thing who would I mean, do that that's I, crazy what a, what a non I, do that. I, can't, I can't think of one <laughs> He was always nice to me. I'm not saying <laughs> no, no, no. that. He yeah. was a nice guy. I'm well, nothing I, against. That story's crazy he too. He apologized. It's yeah. fine. He said it in a in a Here's. social situation where it was like kind of like I was there, but he wasn't. And then people were like, "Oh, you were there?" And he goes, "Yeah." And then it just kind of snowballed, and he yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, anybody. Dude, he he was the real version of that. One of my favorite Norm McDonald jokes is like the simplest joke where Norm just goes, uh, "You ever lie for no reason at all?" Where someone's like, "Hey, did you see the movie with Meryl Streep and the horse?" And you're like, "Yes." <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he right? did that with 9-11. Right, you just never corrected. You there? It's like, yeah. It's like working Ugh. with somebody and you don't know their name and you just continue to not know their name. I did that out, just out there ask. an hour ago. Yeah, it's true, oh, bro. Snowball, man. Okay. I dated somebody and didn't know their name for like three <laughs> weeks. And I'm serious. His name was Eldar and Eldar. Yeah, and like an elf? weekend, I was, was he a f- <laughs> from a different planet. <laughs> he was he was Bosnian. Sure, basically. So, anyway, I was like, either it's way, it's gross. Weird. And I can't remember it. And we've been dating for like a week now, so I can't ask. Were you now. doing like the like, Awkward hey, time champ? Now? Like, is that. Was, so- hey, hey, babe. Hey, buddy. Oh, you. Babe. You probably scared him away. I did. Because you went to <laughs> babe real quick when in reality, if he only knew, no, I care so little about you. I don't even know yeah. your fucking name. <laughs> but he's like, oh, why is this obsessed chick calling me babe and honey <laughs> already? Yeah. yeah. But Eldar. Eldar. <laughs> Eldar. How did you forget Eldar? Because it's, it's like non- it's such a. How did you forget you were fucking a supervillain? <laughs> oh, duh. I'm in the third dimension. His eyes were glowing. How did you not? <laughs> of course he left you. He just needed information. <laughs> Maybe that I was take one. This back to my people. That yeah. was one of his powers. Where yeah. every time you remembered his name, he's like, she could take that to the FBI. I have to wipe her memory. Teleport to your front door. <laughs> Eldar's here. He says he's Bosnian. Oh wait, now he's in the C-SPAN audience. He's okay. Green. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. He was hairy. He's playing the piano with his penis. That, that's amazing. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I've, I. I held on. It was I, great. I've had sex with like tons of women didn't know their name. Yeah. <laughs> so, so many. Wait, let me see your nails, bro. Oh, right, like the, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Gotta get on the alib line, man. There it is. Oh, man. No, I'm already on it. Alibline. But it's not for AIDS. <laughs> I said it wrong in the sketch. Did you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> I said it wrong. I, I had such a hard time. I was like, Abel, Abeline, 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 Abeline. It's like alibi. Al- <sighs> but alibline. Well, you should have been there. God. The you to make it a specific. To save me. <laughs> you drilling multiple things wrong incorrectly was so funny. I used a mad, mad magazine level of satire for that writing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, with this Hassan guy, I don't know. I heard he was working out material once and it wasn't doing well because it was for an award show. And he was like, come on, people, you get to see this first. If he's that kind of guy, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't have anything against the dude. I think his specials are uh, very well received to a lot of people. So, you know, it's just a matter. I just don't think you should take something that is that personal. Because somebody asked me this the other day. They go, you've been through a lot. What if somebody like, dug through your history? I was like, yeah, it's fine. I was like, I've put my own mugshot on my show. I don't care. Like, right. there's nothing that I say that isn't based on truth or some sort of real story. Yeah. There's no pro- And people have said, like, oh, is that, you know, or even if you've ever tried to accuse somebody, or it's like, I put up a story about masturbating in my parents' kitchen and passing out, and somebody was like, was a great like, like, yeah, like, this can't be real. It's like, why would I share that? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> why? It's like, it, but it's like, they weren't, it's hard to explain how many things were messed up in my life to an audience, but it's the same as, like, if you watch Joey Diaz and the whole time you were like, it's bullshit. Yeah. It's like, no, it's just you don't have that same experience yeah. in life. And But he's admitting that he doesn't have this experience. Oh, dude, when people are like, did you make up those stories? I'm like, I fucking wish I did, bro. My life would have been so much healthier and better if you, I made up those stories, if they were just like sketches or whatever. But I don't know, man. I think like the best comedy does come from truth. Like I loved that bit. I, I saw when you posted that Thank bit. You. Uh, but I also... You know, where, when, when, where people get mad with like the cancel culture thing is when it's like you're not being upfront. And I think right now we have such a pious society. Like this is what happened with me when I had the affair where it's like I was so self-righteous about everybody else that I wasn't examining my own stuff. And what's so ironic is I always thought that conservatives or Christians or whatever were the biggest hypocrites. And I've never been more accepted in my life than when I started hanging out with like good Christians because there are awful people in the church, but like the kind that are like, hey dude, like Jesus loved broken people. That's why I became a Christian. Like my pastor is like, I'm a screw up. Don't listen to me. It's Let kind me. of the story of the Bible. That's the whole story, it's which also us. annoys me when you get and the one really righteous Christians. Yeah, <laughs> one one cool dude, and then we're all fucking trash. Yeah. Uh, but it, I was so surprised because I always thought and always heard that it was conservatives who were self righteous and judgmental, and in some ways they are, and mm-hmm. in some ways a lot of Christians are. But like, man, when you're around like the right ones, like you. Yeah, you're right. You can you can be you're untouchable because you're so honest about who you are. And I think if more people were just honest about their flaws, like my life has been so much better since I've just been honest. Like, hey, here's the mistake I made yesterday. Like I'll I'll talk about on my podcast. And you're not trying to just be like, okay, I have to look like this guy. I have to look like I have a put together. I have to look, you know, good. So hopefully like a a, a girl will like me on DM me on Instagram or whatever. It's just like, yo, this is what it is. I'm working on it. Because once you This is the whole recovery thing. Once you start talking about your flaws, it's like, that's the first step. And then the next step isn't own it, isn't just to be be the guy who's like, oh, I'm just the asshole. But that's the first step to start actually like getting better. And then people see that you're actually trying to be better and you're not just like, you know, lauding your stuff over other people um, or, or, or constantly acting about how much better you are. And then, you know, yeah, blah, 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 off my high horse now. No, I don't, it's a high horse. It's a low pony. <laughs> it's a sad pony with a limp. No, it's true. I mean, there's par- There's just, a, I don't know, putting it into action and trying to be a decent person. And, and I think a lot of Christians also feel like, look, I, you know, like they, they are decent people. Maybe they aren't flawed in certain ways. And it's like, that's fine too. You know, yeah. there's, there's nothing. I just think it just comes down to a certain level of self-reflection and understanding yourself and giving yourself. And I think forgiving yourself is the hardest if you are somebody who's genuinely dealing with it because I still can forgive myself. And that's why I think somebody like this, if, if Hassan is genuinely saying like, look, I made like, if he made it up and did it on stage anyway, I can't say that he can't do that. Right. Yeah. And if it kills. There's no rule of comedy that not. says he can't. I just, I do understand the problem with it because it does seem like I'm taking race baiting and, uh, you know, I'm using it yeah. saying I had these experiences. Yeah. And you're also saying that this happens to all these different people. It, it's not a good look because you're, you have no real 
you have no real experience in it or empathy with it. It's an emotional, you even said it's like, it's an emotional story. And it's like, about what? Well, and the thing emotional is, truth, whatever the hell that means. Well, right. the, this is the problem with, with race baiting too. I just thought of this off of what you said, which is that it's not even helping your people, right? It, 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 if anything, it's putting the people that you're defending in sort of more fear yeah. and more sort of like, uh, that's happening people to are him. people it are still yeah people are still like even Dave was like anthrax still like people are still doing this and like that's not a way to make your people feel good like I'm sure that guy has experienced lots of really like real horrible racism in his career before he got famous you know whatever like man talk about that you don't have or to. not at all maybe not just move and on. just got famous <laughs> <laughs> that, that's possible too right yeah sure right. Oh, minority. No, I'm kidding. I, I'm just joking. I'm just saying. No, I think well, every, say that everybody's experienced some sort of the, of, of that, though. That's right. Some right. version some of life. discrimination. Like, that, yeah. uh, I find that uh, with a, a few friends and, and people that I know that, that think that things that happen to them are racism. But I'm like, dude, that's just life. Like, sometimes just shit happens to you and it sucks. But that's just what it is. But then because media is telling you or because comedians are telling you these stories yep. that aren't true, that you think, oh, that's that's happening to him. So then the cashier that's looking at me weird must be because I'm black or it's because I'm brown or it's because... Sometimes it's, like, it's just because you're an asshole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a dick. Just simple. But like, what a disempowering like, thing to to think, right? Like, I think you can hold two truths. You can be like, hey, racism is real. And that right. real racism is awful. And also, not everything is racism. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think we go oh, too far the other way. That's good news. Like, that, isn't that better news that something wasn't racist? I mean, imagine, be happier? Yeah. imagine how hard it is being white mm. and having a cashier look at you funny and follow you or somebody follow you around a store and you have no idea. You're like, this is just because like, of me. Is, and awful. then, I mean, eventually they say, Holy sir, way. can I help you? But I mean, for that first 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Dude, what, what I on earth. when I got to the studio today, uh, and the security guard, who's usually like pretty chill, like came outside and was like, "Can I help you?" There was no part of me that could even be like, "This is because of the color of my skin." This is like, <laughs> "Oh, I just look like a fucking creep right now." This is only because of whatever energy I'm putting out there. That's it. He's That's the only up. reason. Yeah, far worse. Well, Ron DeSantis was here. Yeah. Well, I found that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then I felt that I felt better. Anybody walking that to me in every the door. day? Yeah. And I've been making a lot of threats against that guy. <laughs> and I will say, it, yeah, <laughs> very publicly. <laughs> yeah, sleeves and tattoos him. and flip flops. <laughs> It's like, uh, can I help you, sir? Yeah. At no point did I look like a DeSantis supporter. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're just walking in, you're like, is my daddy here? <laughs> like, I, I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> I thought it was a shooting. There were so many cops. <laughs> right. I thought the same thing. I was like, why are there cops everywhere? They're just like circling yeah, the building. Yeah. Finally happened. Yeah. I know. Finally, <laughs> somebody here got blown away. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a matter of time. One of Alex Stein's guests. I knew it. Okay. <laughs> I snuck a gun in between her tits. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So now we got to have all high levels of security. Dang. Thanks a lot, Alex. Yeah. Well, Ron was here, so he'll probably win. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> truth. Truth in comedy. Oh, Emotional like truth. <laughs> Like I just lost some pay on that one. Um, <laughs> it's docked. <laughs> they don't watch the show. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't, I don't think anybody. Yeah. I don't think anybody here was watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> if they did. They'd be like, "What if we allowed? What is, what is happening here?" <laughs> one of the bosses walked back here. It looked like he was came back by accident. Yeah. I was like, "Oh no, I have to say hi to them now." <laughs> he like had his backpack. He's on. Like, yeah. like, is this not the parking lot? <laughs> Is that where I park my car? <laughs> Are you that dwarf we hired from the show we once had? <laughs> Which one are they talking about? Are I you can't tell. Is that both of us? <laughs> we were hoping you two together could bring an eighth of the income. <laughs> <laughs> the lollipop guild on, yeah. <laughs> on staff here. Oh, security was supposed to escort that flip-flop cast out a long time ago. <laughs> That's why there's a polar bear in the lobby. Oh my god! That's what they're actually. That's how much they're willing to spend on security. They don't want to risk anybody's life, but they'll be like, 
They just hope they scare you away with a bear. The old polar bear <laughs> deterrent. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I was going to come for DeSantis, but then I saw the bear. It's like cocking a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> just won't go do it again. <laughs> oh. Well, we can talk about this real quick because I think it's important before the week is up. Oh, Howard yes, Stern. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you all know and love him if it was 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, claimed. Remember when he just had ladies sit on vibrating things and everyone yeah. was like, Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was great. Beetlejuice. Good. When I went, I loved it. Uh, yeah. Beetlejuice is awesome. Actually, yeah. I made Follow a list. Follow him on, uh, on Twitter. He's great. Yeah. I made, I, I made a list of all the whack packers that died early, speaking of which. But anyway, uh, Howard Stern claimed he takes it as a compliment when critics call him woke. By the way, I kind of take that as a compliment that I'm woke. I'll tell you how I um, feel about it. To me, the opposite of woke is being asleep. And if woke means I can't get behind Trump, which is what I think it means, or that I support people who want to be transgender or I'm for the vaccine, well, dude, call me woke as you fucking want. I'm not for stupidity. You know, I ran out Friday morning. I was over at CVS. Thank you, CVS. I went over there 9 a.m. and got myself that new vaccine for COVID. <laughs> fucking science. This fucking country is so great. I pumped that vaccine right into my veins. I don't care that it's the eighth one coming around the pike. I'll do it again. Yeah, it's science. He didn't go to CVS. No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. He's never he been didn't. in he, a CVS. He hasn't left his house in four years. Oh. It's ruining his marriage. His wife came out and said that. She was like, it's ruining our marriage because he's so like crazy about the the COVIDs. I feel like it's her fault, too, because he left his it's one enabling. wife everybody liked and then married the this one. Anyway. I mean, he would change. That's why he keeps going to CVS, just to get out of the house. Yeah. No, the opposite. Is there another She's vaccine? Shots? Oh, that, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, people just think he's... Uh, oh, man. I wish I I've never been a fan of... I had in my head, but I can't Stern. think of her name. Beth? Mm -mm. Oh. The woman who stars in Sex in the City. <laughs> oh, Sarah Jessica oh, That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, because of the horse The horse, the horse face. Okay. Ah, there you go. Yes, because of a very ugly face. Giddy up. Ghetto. You're still making movies of that show. Well, Stern, okay, so that left. Um, so Stern, <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to put it this. I was talking earlier to my buddy Jimmy Fallon when I was doing his radio show, and he had had a theory that I agreed with him on, and we talked a bit about it, which was, he starts that with Trump, right? Yeah. Trump was his regular guest. Mm -hmm. Now you have mm -hmm. Howard Stern, who ran for, you know, governor, failed, all that stuff. And you have somebody who's been very, very jealous of Trump ever little. since he started getting a little bit ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And he's also very, very narcissistic. Now, we all know he's always been woke. We, we yeah. He's certainly never made a fat joke or hurt anybody or body shamed anyone. We all remember <laughs> yeah. former crackhead Bob and Hank the angry... Or, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> Hank, <laughs> Hank, the uh, mild-tempered transgender. And, uh, you know, those kind of people. Like, yep. literally, here's a list of people that he would bring on his show that are dead now. Crackhead Bob, Hank, the angry drunk dwarf, Ted, the janitor, Blue Iris, Eric, the actor, uh, Celeste, the quadriplegic street magician. Bro, this is Cole why he's Bates. so happy people are calling him woke, because he's like, they don't remember me. Yeah, I remember all of it, because it's when I was a fan of his show. <laughs> I, and I used to do a show with Artie, and I loved Artie. And it's like, he's another right. guy where it's like, okay, you're so woke, you can't forgive a guy. Right. The only reason he's not canceled is because the people that would cancel him are too young to remember his show. Yes. Are literally born after yeah. he was or, at his mega popular. He has done more blackface than Justin yeah. Trudeau. He, he was is. like the most quote unquote problematic. Right. Person back and that's, that's why I loved him. him. That's how he blew up. I loved him. Yeah. And I'm not saying you have to stay in that lane, but now that he's coming out, it looks at the, here's what I'm seeing it as though. He's angry at him. He's angry at Trump. He's always bringing that up. He has that kind of weird syndrome where, you know, he's constantly Tedious. doing a dick measuring contest with him. Well, that's a, that, that's from the eighth vaccine. That's a side effect. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, it's, it's just a kind of brain constant. thing. Yeah. And he's been doing that. And and now it's it's not that he's just it, it's elitism. And if you listen to it at the very end of what he's saying, he's just saying I'm better than you by going. You're saying that, oh, because I don't think vaccines are fake because I'm uh, I'm not stupid. Nobody's saying vaccines are fake. Yeah. They're saying they didn't trust one. Which also, again, this was back in the day, just like Ukraine and wars. This was a liberal 
thing. We were the ones that criticized the pharmaceutical companies and we're like, I don't trust you. And then you're kind of to told this new line. I think my thing is like, be self-aware, man. Like if I became a self-righteous conservative without mentioning my past, uh, I'd be an asshole. Like I can say right now uh, that I can relate to this clip because the first time I was called a social justice warrior before that word was like in the lexicon, I literally was like, thank you. Like I thought it was a fan. <laughs> I am a warrior. Like, I'm so strong. Uh, I thought it was good. And, and I can look back and laugh and be like, Hey man, I've evolved my position. But if I suddenly was like these f dumb liberals, they blah, blah, blah. It's like, no man, I gotta be honest. Like I can say, Hey, I used to think something. Now I think this here yeah. is why that's so much different than yeah. Being a billionaire who made most of his money doing that stuff and now acting like that never happened. And I'm above you. And if you disagree with me, you're a bad person. Well, it's, it, that's honest and it's more valuable to be honest about, I thought this way, and now this is, these are the reasons yes. why I don't. You're educating more. people, you're, educating you're people. trustworthy, you're like earning trust, right. uh, you're teaching people they can change their mind. And this guy of, is a snake. It's a snake. I think he was a snake the whole time. I think he's always just kind of gone with whatever made him popular. Well, you remember, well, like, still doing this. But he was phenomenal gonna at it. He was great at it, but Dave, I mean, like, he's phenomenal well, he's still, radio. He reinvented it, but you are right. I'm just still saying. Has a, a when you brought up shows. the when you brought up the Trump thing, I mean, it started. You remember the whole like O and A, like him going after them. It's like anytime there is competition, like he's always had that kind of jealous, smash the competition like mentality. Well, like, he was uh, he was upset when uh, I'm trying to think of his name. The the shock jock just before him, and I used to do the Bernie and Sid show. Um, Oh, it's the guy that he always claimed. Don Imus. Yeah, Imus, yeah. Yeah. Don Imus, I was thinking. Yeah, Don Imus. He, in, in fact, so much so that in private parts, there's this like over the top version of Don Imus That's with like, right. a star on his dressing room and stuff. So you have Don Imus who treated him in a certain way, but he was a thousand times worse to Opie and Anthony. And Anthony had even done his show. Yeah. So it's like, and he was way worse to them because they were coming up behind him. I mean, and he was, he's been. You know, at some point he was good to comics. I can't say that he wasn't, but he used them in the same way that, you know, to to get ratings. And he, and he was genius at what he did. But the thing is, is he always threw people away. Yeah. And I never, that was something I never liked about him was he just had no problem doing that. And, and people kept saying, oh, well, he wants to get bigger, better A-list names and everything. It's like, no. Ben Stiller, name people that used to go on his show. Right. They all had the balls to sit there and take. Like, they would, like, straight up were, like, asking him about uh, Owen Wilson's suicide attempt. And, ben, yeah. and, uh, he, and Ben Stiller's just sitting there like, Howard, seriously, come on. Like, they were never afraid to go on his show. Right. So it's like, so you're talking about who specifically? Like, Scarlett Johansson, people that are going to perform, like, music? Like, who? Right. You know, he always had A-listers. That's a nonsense excuse. I really like that you use the word elitism, because I think so much of um, the kind of tribalist, left versus right, whatever, it's like, if you actually look at it, the majority of good people, the majority of people in the center, the good people on the left, the good people on the right, it's the elitism we're mad at. And it doesn't matter what political party you are, what it's, it, it, it's when you act like you're above it all, you can do no wrong, you're going to cast jet. You know, you see this with politicians on both sides all the time. It's just like the war should be on fucking elitism, yeah. not like a certain side. We talked uh, to Yoshi yesterday and he was saying the same thing, like people across the the world really actually agree about more things than they disagree about. It's really those elites yes. that make it seem that we're so separated from each other that we can't even talk. Right. We can never have a conversation. Yeah. There's no good cops. There's no good black people. There's no good teachers. There's no good person in a union. There's no and good. And then the opposite. There's no bad cops. There's exactly. no bad teachers. Yes. Yes. It's the exact same thing. Yep. So, yeah, we have a problem with being so separated because of those elites. Yep. But Stern was a blue collar hero in that sense where he went on the radio. I remember I being remember an that. industrial painter when him and Artie were on. It was the hardest I would ever laugh. And you have a crew of people that are working starting at 5 a.m., loving it, getting them through their day. I remember, uh, you know, just a, a ton of moments where you're just in tears at what they were pulling off, especially on Terrestrial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, when yeah. it was on the E! show, like we would watch it. And he really was brilliant and he really was a voice for people, even if it may have been, like you said, like a snake or a play. Whatever it was, though, it seemed genuine at the time. Well, maybe. Is there yeah. something in that that 
if you let it, it will separate you from being that blue collar kind of connected to the people. And then you end up thinking that, no, I am That's better than that. They look at me. I think you get to a point where you're just surrounded by so many yes men, all your agents mm. and managers and that it. Yeah, you could start off with really good intentions yeah. and then it just... I was just going to say, there's a, a saying that uh, fame is a mask that eats the face. Oof. Mm. And Oof. it's like, that's what it is. It's that's like it. you start out and you're a normal human being. And then by, I mean, look at how long he's been in the public eye. I mean, he's almost 80 years old. Like, yeah. it's Damn, been a really? long time. He's been yeah. on the air Goodness. since the 80s. Oh, like, yeah, he was getting thrown... I mean, he, this is a guy who started in very small stations. He was actually... Very loved in Detroit when he was just doing that market. He was doing just New York. It's like you said, like he was doing just these areas where he took a lot of risks. And for people that crap all over Robin, she did stay with him when he was getting thrown out of yeah. everywhere, not yeah. making any money. Like, so for everybody saying, you know, what all the jokes that she's a punchline and everything else, it's like, no, she stuck it out and mm -hmm. believed in what he was doing. So it's like, I, I believe that he earns, he earned to be where he's at, but he definitely forgot who, where he came from. Yeah. And that's a huge problem when you're talking to your audience. And it doesn't mean that you have to go and do like a lot of the disgusting, misogynistic, fat phobic, whatever stuff that you were doing in the nineties, but it doesn't mean that you have to completely degrade your people. And that's yeah. what he's doing is he's, he's completely slamming anybody who's not in the elite class. And that's what I, I think this problem is stern. Well, when you don't have that self-awareness, it's almost like you're mad at your former self, but you can't, say it so you're mm -hmm. just going to project it on other people instead of being like i mean man if that if that clip was him going after the old version of him it would be really powerful if he was just like you know what man like when they call me woke like i think about some of the stuff i used to say and like i feel legitimately bad for that instead of acting like we're all bad it's everybody people. else yes not him yeah yeah and maybe he has said that i don't know well, yeah, and if you can't afford serious, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think that anybody is? I don't know who listens who to that. Is yeah, to that? you really think that anybody is buying series for Stern? They keep giving them like all this money, and I'm like, is the government bailing you out, bro? Every is time Zelensky just tossing you some of his money when he leaves. Every time I go to that studio, legit, it is just more and more barren, and you can't even get yeah. to the Stern side of it. Oh, and just man. all these good shows are gone now, and it's like empty offices now. Like I last time I went there, there was like just like trash in the hallways, and like <laughs> it's yeah. just like piled up, just like a, a dust. Rolling all the hallways. Yeah. There's like the bonfire that people listen to. And other than that, I can't Conan. think of any. And yeah, <laughs> Conan. Conan and it's like Sam it. Roberts and Jim. Jim and Sam do. Yeah, they, they, well, I mean, it's not the ONA audience, no. but yeah, I mean, they have, a, a, well, and Sam's done very, very well with Sam's wrestling. And like, those are the only shows I, I, I've done over there still. And like, all yeah, the and other he's ones. skyrocketed when you really think about it out of that whole. Dude, when I did when I did Sam's wrestling show, it's like in his basement, and he just has a basement dedicated to pro wrestling, and just a dope family upstairs. And you right. just go, you figured it out, buddy. Good <laughs> on did you. It. You did. were just an intern on ONA that people were bullied, you know? and like, <laughs> yeah, dude, totally. Yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting turnaround. Yeah, the nerd win, man. I'm, I think I'm, he, I love him. That's why I think, like, yeah, he's kind of the name there now, which is such a, a strange thing to have watched after it's 20 years. Wild. It's wild. So, but I'll tell you what's not a strange thing to see. Me, this weekend at the oh. Wonders Theater in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That's tomorrow night at 7 and Saturday at 11. We're doing some wacky, zany shows. So come on out. Come say hello. Or, yeah, just do it. What's wrong with you? And then next Wednesday, I'm going to be at Hyenas. And then October 5th, I will be at the Lexington Music Theater oh. in Lexington, Michigan. And the 6th, the Bay City State Theater in Bay City, Michigan. Hey, and you could find me on Friday Night Tights tomorrow, maybe. I might be making a video <laughs> because our, our channel got a uh, strike on it. So, uh, yeah, you can find me there. I'll be there. Jamie, where are you gonna where are you gonna be? I have a new podcast. It's called The Back Row with Jamie Kilstein. You can go to backrowpod.com. Uh, uh, I talk about uh, faith and mental health and kind of the transitions I've made. Uh, but it's not a, a preachy Christian show. Uh, I think on this week's, I talk about uh, a threesome I recently had. But then I started talking about Jesus afterwards and felt like maybe that canceled it out and I can still go to heaven. Um, so it's a show for screw ups who are just trying to be better people. And then uh, I make sketches about all that kind of stuff on Instagram, which is at the Jamie Kilstein on instagram threesome sketches okay 
Yeah. Which and Chris, Jesus Christian. I think we're just going to have to jump because it is a little over right now. So good night, everybody. We will be back next Tuesday. I hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend. And I, seriously, come back next yes, Tuesday. Yes, do it. We'll see you there. AIDS. AIDS.